In this tutorial, you can learn how to look up related value from one table here to another table in here, like this. Hey, welcome to another FileMaker beginner tutorial. My name is Sunny Chu, and today we are going to learn about how to look up related value in the FileMaker. So in this file here, this is the completed file, which is going to be um, what we're going to work on in this tutorial. We have two tables in here. One is the customer table with a lot of um, customer information. And the other is a certificate table, which contains um, a hypothetical product warranty certificate. But this is not super important. Now the most important part is that in here, I can quickly, let's say I select the customer number. Uh, maybe I select this guy from uh, called Roy, and it's able to automatically take Roy's data. So let's check number 93 here. It's able to automatically look up Roy's data from another table and paste it onto the field within this table. And the interesting thing is, this is not a direct connection of relationship. It is actually a lookup. So if I delete the Roy in here, it doesn't affect the master record here. So it gives you a little bit more of a flexibility on, um, so you can paste the data in first for a better shortcut, and then you can make changes to it. So it's really handy technique to um, use in FileMaker. So let's get into the tutorial. So I want to explain why I think lookup is such an important feature if you want to build business automation. And it all has to do with what I call the iron rule of automation. And rule number one is that you don't want to do the same thing twice. And I think the benefit is pretty obvious is that if you're doing something over and over again of similar nature, you don't want to repeat what you have done if you can automate it. So for physical work, maybe you want some sort of machine to help you streamline that process. For cognitive or data work, you want to create some sort of database to help you handle it. Now, in our specific example, I think it's uh, better to call it don't enter the same data twice. Obviously, in our example, we already entered the customer information once. And if we have to manually enter it again, the first disadvantage is that obviously it's going to consume more time. Now, the, another disadvantage, which is um, less obvious, is that it gives you an extra chance of getting it wrong. Now, we as human, we, our data entry process, it's probably not going to be perfect. And we're going to have some error or mistakes. So if you have two different points of entry of data, of the same type of data, what's going to happen is that you have two chances of getting it wrong. And if you want your database to really automate effectively, you would want these type of error to be as little as possible. So that's the philosophy behind why lookup is so important. And let's get to the workflow of this tutorial. So basically, for this tutorial, the workflow, it's going to be pretty straightforward. As I showed you just now, we have a customer table in here. On the other side, we have a document. And in our specific example, it's a warranty certificate for maybe a purchase. What we're going to do is that we are going to type in an ID here. And then this ID will automatically connect to the other side, look up the value, and give us these information in here, like this. So this workflow is pretty straightforward. And so let's get into the database. OK, so let's get into the database. So I think the first thing I want to do is to open this file up and just give you a little bit of context of what we're working with. So let's go to File, Manage, Database, and have a quick look at our table. So in this specific um, FileMaker file, we have two tables in here, which is the contact, which contains all the customer information, and also a certificate table, which contains um, well, each certificate inside um, this file. So the setup is pretty simple. In the contact database, we have some general information like ID, first name, last name, email, gender, and phone. And on the other hand, we have certificate. And certificate setup is a little bit different. We have the certificate ID here. And then we also have the customer ID, which indicates that um, this certificate belongs to this customer and a field for us to enter the customer first name, last name, email, and phone. So that's the basic concept of it. So if you look at it at the more bird eye view, 
you'll notice that um, contact we have the fields for that customer for the certificate we have the customer first name last name email and phone being duplicated onto this table so that's the first thing you need to set up when you want to create a lookup to make sure that the data are available on both sides because what we're doing is that we're trying to copy data from here and paste it into here so that's the general concept and so um, now that the basics is uh, already covered so let's go into have a little bit more um, deeper look into this file so on the left side we have a customer list in here and on the right side we have the certificate so I think first thing I want to do is to just introduce you to a concept called auto enter option so let's say if I go here and I create a new warranty record it's not going to give me um, a warranty number automatically and I want to show you how to do that first because that will give us the foundation to work on the next part which is the lookup value so go to file manage database and let's go to the certificate double click onto the certificate ID the warranty certificate ID field and in here I want to select the auto enter option in here and set the serial number now what I want to do is um, since this is a warranty let's call it W0001 and let's click OK and see what happens so when I set up this serial number and when I create a new record the new record will be using this serial number as a starting point and if I create another new record it's going to increment to 2 to 3 so these are pretty much the basic stuff now what we want to do in order to look up the value is that we want to use similar mechanics inside FileMaker so let's go to file manage database and let's start by working on the customer first name so the goal is pretty simple so let's say um, in here I know Florence is number two so what I want to do is when I enter number two in here I want Florence first name to be populated into this field so let's go into customer first name and the place that we are looking for is the auto enter option and underneath it there is a lookup value but when I click into the lookup value it will ask me which table I want to start looking from starting with table the certificate table and I want to look up from related table now currently it's um, not available with any choice yet because we haven't set up the relationships so let's go into here and click manage relationship or you can go back um, to the original layout and go to file manage database to get into this um, same page so what we want to do is to connect the relationship here now if you don't know what relationship is in database I would suggest you to have a look at my other video called relationship explain which is going to walk you through the basics of it so in this case here um, we have a customer ID inside the certificate table indicating which customer this certificate belongs to and on the other side we have the customer ID in here so I want to connect these two to indicate to the computer that these are the matching field so when I connect it this way what it means is that let's say um, in here when I type in number two in the warranty table it's going to populate this with number two and it's going to go all the way to the other table on the contact table side so um, on this side and try to look up which customer with the ID of number two and then in that way it's able to connect and get all these other information about first name last name email and gender using it so let's just um, now that you have connected this um, relationship let's close this and we are going to go back to this lookup view um, setting place so we want to start with the table certificate and we want to look up from related table of contact now this option is now available because we just connected the relationship in the diagram just now so what I want to do is to copy value from the field first name click OK click OK again and let's just try this so let's type in um, number one in here and when I click away to confirm you'll notice that Blaine's name is automatically pasted into the first name 
And if I type in number, let's say three, Hobart, Hobart's name is going to be automatically pasted. So it's uh, pretty straightforward. And let me just complete this database by doing all the other work. So customer last name, lookup value from certificate to contact, last name, and also same thing. Um, I think that's email I'm working with. Yep, email and lookup value. Last phone in here. Click OK. Click OK and done. So let me quickly change this part a little bit more and see if it works. So number eight, Lel. I don't know how to pronounce this, but if you see here, number eight, um, all her information is here. So um, that's the basics of it. But what we want to do is that right now, it's not a very intuitive method to really just let, let's say I, I'm not looking at this customer table. It's not very intuitive for me to maybe just type in the number and know exactly which number is here. So what I want to do is to set up some sort of a drop down list so that I can select from a range of value that I can see. So go into layout mode, click onto customer ID, click onto the fourth tab of the inspector panel, and we're going to set up a drop down list in here. And the next thing we want to do is we want to set up a value list. So what we want to select value from, click on this pencil icon here and click new. And we want to set up a, uh, let's say customer value list. And we want to use a value from an existing field. So use value from fields. We want to select contact and we want to use the ID field in here. So let me just quickly click OK and show you what's going to happen. And browse mode. Now, if I click onto this right now, you will see I'm giving given a list of um, number value like this. But this is not super useful because I want to know the person's name in order to, for me to select. Looking at number like this doesn't make too much sense. So I want to go back here, click onto this field, and I want to change my value list again by clicking here. So specify field. Now, instead of just looking at the ID, I want to also display value from the second field and maybe I want to show the first name here. And what I want to do is also, I want to show um, to show value only from the second field. So it's only going to show me the first name that I am um, trying to find. So click OK, click OK, OK again. Now what this is going to do is that when I click onto this field, it's going to give me a list of customer name instead of number. But when I, let's say I click onto Alex here, it's not going to populate the word Alex into this customer number, but instead it's going to populate Alex customer ID like this. Now you can see right away that once I did that, all the information on the bottom also changed according to that. Now it's very important to know that the lookup value is triggered whenever I change this, um, specific customer ID because that is the relationship that we set up here. So whenever this customer ID change, it's going to trigger the lookup all the way to the other side and update all the value that I have considered as lookup value. And so that's the second part. Now there is one very important detail about lookup that I want you to know. And let me just show you an example. So I want to open the customer page here. And so what I want to do here is that I want to, let's say, go here and create a new record of myself. So 101, um, first name is Sunny, last name is Chu. And I want to deliberately not enter any email and phone in here. So I just want to show you what's going to happen. So let's say if I change to N right now, all the information to change to ends um, information. But when I, well, let's have a quick look here. Phone 670 and also the email is starting with AT. So we want to remember that. Now, if I go down, scroll down and try to find my name here, Sunny, when I click OK, you will notice that my first name and last name change, but my phone and email hasn't changed. Now. This is something very important because these are Anne's phone and Anne's email. It's not mine, but it stayed there. 
and it's kind of like an input error because that's not my phone. So here is why this is happening, is that we want to check an additional option in our lookup, um, auto enter lookup option. So let's go into our database and let's go to, let's say email. Now inside the lookup value option here, there is a checkbox here that's called don't copy content if empty. That means that if I look up on the other side in the contact table and I find empty value, if I check this box, it's not going to copy it. So what that means is that right now, since this is checked, when I go into, let's say when I change from, let's say Regis, I change to his uh, phone and email. But when I go into here and select Sunny, it's going to look up on the other side of the table and realize that I don't have a phone and email in here. So what it's going to do is that it's not going to copy anything but leave the value as is. And this is problematic. So what we want to do, one last step is that we want to make sure that all our lookup value, um, well it's, it's a case by case situation but this is something you want to be aware of. But in this specific case, I want to not look up the, con not copy the content if it's empty. Well, I mean, I want to copy the content even if it's empty. And let me just uncheck all of these like this. And let's see if that worked. So if I go and change Roy now, the phone email change, but if I change to myself, Sunny, you will notice that the phone and email is not showing up. So that's what we want. So that should conclude this specific tutorial. And as you can see, this lookup feature is a um, very powerful feature than the normal, um, than normally when you just look up from another table. Now, what I mean is you have another method that um, you can do like this. Since we connected the relationship in the graph, the other method is something that looks like this. We can directly call for information on another table from this certificate table. So what's gonna happen is that although they are showing the same value, this field is directly connected to this master um, customer information. So if I change this to Sunny with triple Y on the end, it's gonna change my master record. But for this lookup value, it doesn't matter what I change this, it's just a, a field with an additional value copy from here and paste it here. So this field here and this one here is a separate value. And it's very useful for storing historical data because for example, let's say this person brought a product warranty on um, 2018 and then they changed the name on 2019. But you don't want your product warranty record, a transaction record to be, um, to have all these information updated automatically because we want to keep a record of what happened during that time. And that's why I think this lookup method is so useful because it not only if it does it gives you the ability to quickly look up other value, it's also allow you to do flexible change. So for, for example, let's say um, normally, let's say my, my email will be sunny at fmbeginner.com like this. So let's quickly look that up. Um, oops, confirm this first. Let's quickly look that up again. So like this, normally I'm using this email, but maybe for this specific purchase, I want to change to another email. So sunny at sunny.com. Then in this case, it's not going to affect my master record, but I'm still able to retain that flexibility for this specific record. So that's basically it for this tutorial. If you want to, again, if you want to download the exercise file, that I've completed in here. You can check that out in the link in the description down below, along with other Farmaker beginner resources. And um, I think that should be it. And I guess I will see you on the next tutorial.